Yeah, this is Carlin Nash RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through this uh, Forest River Salem Model 33 TS. Okay, so here we are on the door side of the trailer. I'm moving towards the rear. You can see there's an outdoor kitchen. You have uh, obviously running water in the refrigerator. Back here, you've got a swing out um, grill. Now, the grill has to be connected with the hose, with the LP line. And that's done right here. So you're basically going to, so hopefully you can see this. Let me try and move down here where there's better light. I guess that's better light. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll go back here. Okay. So um, basically the male part of the hose, will, you'll, you'll, let me get this right here. You'll, you'll draw this back, put the hose in the hole there, and you let it go, and it locks on. Then over here, you can see there's a valve. You turn it to this position to turn the gas on. The other end goes into the bottom of the grill. The other end has this fitting on it, and it has, there's a male on the bottom of the grill. So you have to hook up the gas before you swing it out, or before you light it anyway. All right. Now, this, this particular trailer comes with, uh, obviously, there's four uh, stabilizer jacks. They're just scissor jacks. They crank down. They use a, a three-quarter inch crank or a three-quarter inch socket or drill attachment. Uh, most people use a drill these days. It's a lot easier. But this has something called a strong arm which will take away the forward and rearward movement to a great extent. So this T-handle locks it in place. So it always should be open and let, until you've locked it into place. So before you lower this, you're gonna make sure this is open. You lower the jack down and when you get in the down position, you're gonna tighten it up, right? And then uh, it'll be stable. But before you bring it back up, you obviously have to loosen it. And there's one of these on each corner. Okay. So, you've got a power awning with an LED light strip. You've got outside speakers, power. Um, that's the vent for the furnace. This is your water heater. Now, this water heater works on both gas and electric. Um, to operate it on electric, keep in mind this switch right here. If you can see it, let me see if I'm getting a good picture of it. I know it's hard to see, but it's right here in the lower left-hand corner. And that, that operates this, behind this plate here, this cover is an electric heating element. So you can turn the electric heating element on and off right there. Uh, to light it on gas, the switch is inside. Some trailers will have a, a heat, the uh, electric switch inside too, and still have this one, so um, keep that in mind. I mean, just so you know that. This is a, this is a holdover from when, the, when there were no switches inside at all. So anyway, the gas switch is on the inside. That is your drain plug right there. Always let the pressure out like this before you uh, pull the drain plug or else it'll come flying out of there like a cannonball. All right, now this is, this is to, to fill your onboard water tank, your fresh water tank. The reason you'd want to do this is because uh, some, of the, some parks and some state parks don't have uh, plumbing on the campsite, but they'll have a fill station when you first go in the gate. And that, when you run into that situation, you'll use this. You'll fill it up. You turn on the electric pump inside and you're all set to use all the water, anything that uses water in the trailer. Most commonly, you'll use uh, the city water fill, which is around the other side. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so usually you're going to use city water, but sometimes you're going to use this part of the system here. They're totally independent of each other in the sense that you, if you're using one, you don't even have to think about the other. Right here is the drain for your fresh water tank. It's just a ga gate valve. Let me pull it here so you can see. We were water testing so there's water in it. But there you have it right there. Alrighty. Your steps fold into the trailer. Keep in mind, um, let's see here, there's a pin right here. If you can see it, you can pull that pin out and you can adjust the legs up and down as needed, depending on what the terrain you're on. Alright, so as we move back, this is just a charging a port to hook up a solar battery panel. It's just strictly a battery charger, so if you hook up a solar panel, that'll charge the battery. It's an option. Okay. Your hitch, we're going to show you when you get here how that works. It must be around the other side. Um, also, it's a, it's a centerline Husky hitch, so you can look online to refresh your memory. they got videos on their website um, in case you, you uh, can't remember how, how it uh, operates, if you're new to this sort of thing. Uh, this is the kill switch for the battery. Right here, I'll show you how it works here. Whoops, so that's on right now. 
The only time you're going to turn that off is when you put the trailer in storage. Uh, the, the reason you would want to shut it off is because the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector, for example, are hardwired to the battery. There's no way to shut them off, so even if you shut all the lights off, it's still going to draw power. So when you put it into storage, you can just shut it off. Um, let me open this up here for you. Hold on. Should be having trouble here. There we go. Okay. Hold on one second while I get this off of here. There we go. Holy cow. All right, so you got two 20 pound tanks. Uh, this is the LP regulator. It's an automatic changeover regulator, so it'll draw one tank down. And when it's empty, it'll automatically switch over to the other one and then back to the other one as you go. So when you hear it, you know, it's drawing from the door side tank. When, when it switches over and you hear it drawing from the off door side tank, you can just get that one filled, the other one filled. So, all right. Moving right along. This is your hitch. It's a Husky center line with built-in sway control. Like I said, we'll show you how it works when you pick up your trailer, but you can also go on Husky center line site and look at their video. All right, you got three slide outs. Always put your stabilizers down before you put the slide outs out or else it'll want to lean to it one side. But if you put your stabilizer jacks down first, you won't have any issue like that. All right, so these are your dump valves. Let me reach here. I'm sorry about my camera work. So, this is the black tank valve to dump the black tank. The black tank is toilet water and waste. The gray tank is sink and shower water. Okay, so you uh, basically you're going to pull the black tank first. Or you're gonna, well, you're going to put your hose on here, obviously. You put it in the other end of the dump station. You do the black tank. Then you're going to pull the gray tank. The reason you do that is because the gray water is cleaner than the black water. So it helps to wash it out a bit. Then you'll come up here to the black tank flush. You hook up your hose at the dump station uh, right on here. Turn it on and the black tank has sprayers inside that will clean it out really well. Uh, like it says here, don't flush, don't open the, or turn on the water until you've opened the black tank valve down here so too much pressure doesn't build up. This is where your power cord is. It's 25 feet long and 30 amp. That's the plug on it. Um, we do give you a reducer so you can plug it in at home, but keep in mind you can run everything in this trailer at on 15 amps at home, but you can't run the air conditioner because it will eventually pop the circuit breaker because it draws too many amps. All right. Okay. We're moving along. Okay. This is just satellite and cable through to the entertainment area. This is your city water connection I told you about. You're just going to hook the hose up. You're ready to go. Nine times out of ten you're going to be using this. But you also have the option that I showed you early on about the uh, filling the fresh water tank and using that. All right, that is a, a housing for a backup camera. This is pre-wired for a backup camera. We do sell them. If you're interested, talk to our parts people. Um, if you do get one, it has to be a Furion camera that fits into that housing. Uh, so make sure if you get one in a, from uh, elsewhere that it's the correct camera to fit in there. It basically, it's hardwired. You, you've got a wireless screen, though, in your tow vehicle. And when you turn it on, you can back, see your, behind you to back up, or you can keep it on going down the road, whatever you want to do. While I'm looking up, this is the most important thing. You have to inspect the roof of your trailer. You have to do it three times a year, in the fall, in the, in the spring, and in the fall, and then once in the middle of the summer. You go up there. You can walk on the roof. You walk around. Look for any ceiling, any of the seals to start to separate or crack. Pay special attention to corner areas. And uh, you just inspect it because some year you're going to have to have it sealed. Um, so you're just inspecting to make sure that it's good and tight uh, to uh, basically get ahead of it. So it's very important to check it three times a year. That's very important. All right, so, so much for important stuff. Um, I got the slide outs out, but you can see for to operate this slide room, um, it's right here, Up. like so. Okay, your awning is here. All right, so you're just going to roll that out until you can see the awning tube. There's your light strip right there. Let me bring on in the rest of the wing out uh, here. Okay. Um, the water pump I told you about, if you're using a fresh water tank, 
uh, is right here, all right? The water heater on gas is right here. Always make sure there's water in the tank before you turn on any heat source. Okay, you can check your levels here. You can see the battery is almost totally charged. When it's plugged in, it'll be charged. Uh, fresh water tank is empty. As you fill it, it'll graduate up at one-third increments. It'll, the LEDs will light up as they go. Black tank is empty. Gray tank is empty. Once you get past two-thirds, you're going to have to think about dumping your black and gray tank. All right? Okay. Over here is your sound bar. This sound bar has two zones. Uh, one is inside the trailer. Two is outside the trailer. You can stream off this USB port here. It has uh, Bluetooth so you can hook up wirelessly with your phone or tablet. Uh, it has an HDMI in there if you want to set a game machine there or go into the system uh, on a rainy day, something like that, you have that. There's a backer plate behind here for your TV. If you're going to get a bracket, make sure you get a swing out bracket obviously, but try to get the one that locks into place, therefore you don't have to use a strap. You won't have a strap hanging there all the time. Um, this is your signal booster for your digital antenna. Uh, this is telling you that this trailer is pre-wired for a, uh, a, a basically a signal booster for, for public Wi-Fi, campground Wi-Fi. Um, there's also a plate on the roof where you'd put an antenna if you're interested. We do carry this, but you can go to their online to uh, kingconnect.com and look at the packages they've got. Okay. Um, the fireplace, um, it has a fan in it. You can set that the uh, the fire. You can change colors on it and that sort of thing. Uh, it uh, you can set the, the thermostat on it, so it does a lot. It'll take the chill out of it. It runs just on 110 AC. Uh, you both these devices come with remotes. Also, you can control it from here, like so. Okay. All right. Now I want to tell you that. Uh, I don't know if you, how well you know trailers, if this is your first one or what, but you have to winterize the trailer. And before you winterize it, you have to bypass the water heater. There's valves in the back of it. So keep in mind, you have to have somebody do it until you know how, if you don't know how. But you always got to bypass the water heater before you put any antifreeze in the system. If you don't, antifreeze gets in the water heater and leaves a really foul taste and a foul smell that won't go away. So you always got to bypass it. So that's something you need to educate yourself on if you don't already know. Okay, so your your um, your range hood, fan and light. Your your microwave works like any of the microwave. Hopefully the gas is turned on here. Let's see. Yep, so you can see it lit there. So you're just going to turn on the the burner and then turn it clockwise to spark it. This oven also sparks. So the back here, there's a pilot light. Maybe we can see it if, if I spark it. It's hard to tell if we can. I don't know if you can see that. But the bottom line is, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the oven knob and you're going to put it to pilot. Then you're going to depress it and hold it. Then you're going to spark it right here until the pilot light back there lights. After it lights, you hold it for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up. You go to operating temperature. It'll cycle on and off like a regular oven. But when you go back to off, obviously the flame will go off but the pilot light goes off too. So keep that in mind. Um, you have to relight the pilot light every time you use the oven. Okay, all the lights have a button in the middle, like so, okay. Okay, this folds out to a jackknife bed. You just fold it out. Obviously you can drop this table down and uh, take the poles out and lay it on the cleats here. Use the set back cushion to fill in the spaces, and you got another bed there. Uh, then you have a bunk room. This jackknife's flat here. This bunk will come down, so there's another two bunks, and then you've got this one here. Okay, so you have a lot of um, sleeping space in this trailer. There's a TV backer here, and video and power for your for your TV set, so you can. You could put a you'd put a swing out bracket on this one so you can sit over on the couch and watch it. Okay. All righty, and a ladder, of course. Come into the bathroom. Your shower works like any other shower. This has a magnetic strip in it, so it, it stays shut. But to travel, you should use this rubber thing. 
Okay, so this works like any other shower. You just turn it on and you're all set. All right. Um, sink works like any other sink, obviously. This GFCI, all the plugs in, it, in this trailer are, are wired through a, a GFCI. So um, when they, if you use the coffee pot outside and it pops, you'll have to reset it inside here, okay? But all the plugs, even if they don't have, if they don't look like a GFCI, they're still wired through one. Okay, with the toilet, you flush this one with this pedal here. You can barely see it there, right like that. So there's resis this is residual water um, from when it was water tested. So what happens is the black tank is directly below, right? Um, when you step on the pedal, water will swirl out. So you can't use the toilet dry or without chemical. So the first thing you do, you get to the campground, you hook up your water, you hook up your power, and then you'll come in here and you'll put the dose of the chemical in there, whichever chemical you use. Um, You'll step on the pedal and it'll flush, water will come swirling out, and you fill it up with a gallon or two of water. There's no way to tell that on a monitor how much a gallon or two is. You'll just have to get used to doing it. The bottom line is you want to have some water in there and chemical before you start using it. Then you'll just keep using it as normal. And uh, let's say you're going to stay on the same campsite, but you had to dump. So you would dump the tank, then you would come back in here and repeat that procedure. Put the chemical in and a little bit of water, and you're all set. Now when you flush this, It'll only fill about up to here. That's just so it doesn't water doesn't slosh out when you're pulling the trailer. So if you look at the pedal here, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can get a better angle. See, I can push it down about that far before the trap opens. That activates the water valve. So you can fill it as high as you want before you use it. So keep that in mind that you can, um, before you use the toilet, you can put as much water in there as you need to. All right. Also, it has a fan up here. There's the switch right there. And use the fan with a shower. Um, you want to pull the humidity out if you use the shower because these t trailers are built really tight these days. And you don't uh, want to uh, uh, let the humidity build up in the trailer. Okay, so down here, this device is the power converter. It converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. So you can see you've got regular household circuit breakers here. And you've got 12 volt fuses here. Some things have to run on AC in the trailer, like let's say the air conditioner and the microwave, things like that. So you, that's where this would be dealt with. Then the power is converted down to 12 volt DC, and uh, each one of these fuses is labeled also. It operates all the, it protects all the 12 volt appliances. So basically, if any of these were to blow, they'll light up, and you could see it through this tinted plastic here if that happens. All right. Also, this is a battery tender. As long as you're plugged in, it's going to sense how much energy your battery has. And if it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs. If it's charged, it'll trickle a couple. But it'll always keep your battery charged as long as you're plugged in. There's a fan in there that'll come on and off as you put a load on it, so that's normal. This refrigerator is, is a 12-volt compressor-style refrigerator. So it's like your refrigerator at home. It runs on 12 volts, though. So you can see it's, it's deeper than the gas absorption refrigerator. It's, most people like them a lot because it's still 12-volt. So you, when you're towing it down the road, you can leave it on. And uh, when you're at a campground, you just turn on or it'll, the, the uh, city power. The 110 AC will be converted to 12 volt DC by this device here, the power converter. And you, it'll run then, too. So got a big freezer also. And always lock this so it doesn't, the door doesn't come open in transit and, and get damaged. All right. Go up to the bedroom here. Okay, so I know my camera work isn't the best here. I'm just using my phone here. So, but you got some some bins here, a little foot locker type deal under the bed. You've got another backing plate for another TV and an antenna video out plus power. Right, all the windows have shades except for one of them has a blind, and they go up very slowly. They're not like the old ones; they go up super fast. Also, this is an escape window. Right, let me back up so you can see it. Basically, this is how it works. You're going to go like this, push it through. You can use it right for regular ventilation like that. But if you have to escape, you'd push this all the way through. You grab hold of this red tab and pull the screen out, and then out you go. Um, so in emergencies, you can escape that away. Okay, you have a huge closet, and I mean huge as trailers go. This is huge here. You've got more. All right. 
So this one latches like this. So I got that barn door concept going. There we go. All right, all the heat comes out of the floor. All the AC comes out of the ceiling. The slide to operate this bedroom slide is right here on the wall. Let me back up so you can see where I'm at. It's right there on the wall. You have to have the door shut, so basically you're going to stick your hand through and operate it from the other side. Okay, now the slide for the bunk room is right here, and the door has to be shut in order to operate it. Keep that in mind. You always got to have the door shut. All right, last but not least, the thermostat. You, you hit mode once to light it up, then you'll cycle through. The fan is the, the air conditioner running without the compressor. The cool is the air conditioner. You always want to try and run it on auto. Auto is the way to go. Um, and then heat. Then back to off. Everything has a delay time, a lag time. So there'll be seconds, could it be up to five seconds go by before, like say, the air conditioner comes on and before it shuts off. That's normal. That's the way it's designed. So you just have to be patient. When we first, they first started shipping this thermostat, I, I was thinking nothing was working because I couldn't get anything to turn on, but I just got a little pa more patient and everything works just fine. So, okay, um, I, let me look around here. I think I've covered everything. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Remember what I said about winterizing and bypassing the water heater. You can get, you can look at online videos. You can look at manufacturer's videos. You can read the paperwork for the water heater. The, um, like I said, there's plenty of stuff online for every appliance. All you have to do is type in the, the appliance, the, the brand and the model number, and you'll be able to get PDF uh, manuals, all kinds of stuff for them. Plus, there's usually videos these days, too. So you can always educate yourself that way. So, okay. Ah, one last thing. This is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector here. It should always be green. I can set it off here. We'll go through two self-tests, one for LP, one for carbon monoxide. The other one's coming up, there we go, and back to green. It should always be green like that. If it goes off, you go outside, take your family outside, shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on. Okay? All right then, so um, you can always call us and we can uh, help you out, talk you through things. There's plenty of ways to learn online also. Um, but uh, for right now, we're, we have to do these videos because of the virus, so um, that's the way it has to be. So, okay, well, thank you very much for purchasing from National RV, and uh, goodbye.